Hello everyone, my name is Lucy. Today, I will be your guide throughout the lesson. In this session, we are going to discuss about constant terminal rate solution. Constant terminal rate solution can be divided into two, which are EI function solution and dimensionless pressure drop solution. Today, we are only going to focus only on EI function solution. The lesson consists of the introduction of constant terminal rate solution and EI function solution, and also how to solve the problem using Microsoft Excel. So, what is constant terminal rate solution? Constant terminal rate solution is a method that is used to solve for the pressure change throughout the radial system, providing that the flow rate is held constant at one terminal end of the radial system. As you can see in the above picture, the production rate is held constant throughout the period. Next, I will explain to you about EI function solution. EI function solution is one of the method of using constant terminal rate solution. But this method can only be used after a few assumptions is being made. The few assumptions are infinite acting reservoir. This means the reservoir is infinite in size. Second, the well producing at constant fixed flow rate. Third, the reservoir is at the uniform pressure when production begins. Fourth, the well with a well bore radius is centered in a cylindrical reservoir radius. Lastly, there is no flow across the outer boundary. This equation is the equation for EI function solution. P to the function of R and T means the pressure at radius from the well after T hours. The initial pressure, PI, oil flow rate and STB per day, the viscosity and centipoise, the formation volume factor, B0, porosity, phi, the total compressibility, radius of investigation, permeability in milli darcy, and time in hours. The very first step in solving this problem is to find the value of exponential integral. To make it easier to calculate, let the x negative 948 times porosity times viscosity times the total compressibility times radius square divided by kt. After finding the value of x, we could now find the exponential integral of minus x. However, the working steps to calculate the exponential integral of x is very complicated, therefore, we have already simplified the calculation for your convenience. We classify this step into three. The first is when x is less than 0.01. Second is when x is between 0.01 and 10.9. And lastly when x is greater than 10.9. When x is less than 0.01. The exponential integral can be calculated with this formula. Once the value is obtained, you can just simply combine the value obtained with the original formula. The next case is when x is in between 0.01 and 10.9. When you have the value in this range, the exponential integral of negative x can be found using the graph as well as the table. Last but not least, when x is greater than 10.9, any value of x will result in 0. Therefore, the second term of the original function will be zero as well. This shows that the pressure at radius far from the well still remain the same as the initial reservoir pressure. Now, it's time for us to solve some questions using Microsoft Excel. Let's go. Let's go. Now, let me read the question for you. An oil well is producing at a constant flow rate of 300 STB per day under unsteady state flow conditions. The reservoir has the following rock and fluid properties. B0 is equals 1.25 barrels per day. Oil viscosity equals 1.5 centipoise. Total compressibility equals 12 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Permeability equals 60 MD. Thickness, H equals 15 feet. Initial pressure equals 4000 psi. Porosity equals 15%. Well bore radius e equals 0.25 feet. Calculate pressure at radii of 0.25, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, 1000, 1500. 
2,000 and 2,500 feet for 12 hours. Plot the results as A. Pressure versus logarithm of radius B. Pressure versus radius first of all. We need to calculate the pressure at the point of interest using all the data given before we could plot the graph. To make things more organized, it is recommended to make a table consist of the radius, the x value, the integral of minus x and the pressure at radius r at time t. Firstly, we need to calculate the value of x. To calculate this, it is very easy if we just key in the formula and let the computer calculate for us for each point of interest. Click on this column, start with equal sign to begin the formula. Enter the formula. N 9, 4, 8 times 0 0.15 times 1.5 times 12 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times. Now click the radius column to use that value, and then square the value and divide by 60 times 12. Then, press enter to let it calculate. Now, click and hold the small square thingy at the bottom right of the box and drag it until the last row of the column. Do you see what happened? The other row will follow the formula from the first row. Now, you have the value of x. From here we need to categorize the x value to choose the proper formula. As for the first four value, they are less than 0.01. So we need to use the formula exponential integral of x is equals to ln 1.781 times x. Do the same thing as before but only to the affected value. Now, the next four value is in the range of 0.01 and 10.9. So we need to use either the graph or the table. For this example I will take from the table. Since the table only provide only up to one decimal place. We need to do interpolation to get a more accurate value. Let me do this one for you. Please bear in mind that the table gives you the value for negative EI, so don't forget to put back the negative sign at the front of the value for the other three values. Please try it by yourself. Now for the last two values, the X value is more than 10.9, so automatically the integral will be zero, and for the last column. Time to calculate the pressure at each of the radius after 12 hours, same like before. Begin the formula with equal sign 4000 plus 44.125 times the exponential integral of minus x. Then, drag the formula until the last row now. You have completed the table, and it's time to start plotting the graph. Now come to the part where we're going to plot the graph according to the calculated results. To make a line graph with different x and y axis, create a two column table. Bear in mind that the x axis value should be on the left column, and the y axis on the right column of the table, in this case, for part A. The x axis is semi log radius and pressure on the y axis. Now that all the values in the table is complete, we can proceed plotting the graph. To plot the graph, select the entire table, then click on the Insert tab in the Chart menu. Choose Scatter type of graph with line graph, select the desired graph and now the graph is done. 
To edit the graph, for example, changing the values to semi-log data. Double-click anywhere on the graph, then on the desired axis. Click once. Then there should be a column appears on the right-hand side. Select axis option, and tick on the logarithmic scale. Congratulations, now you have completed the question, well done, and thank you very much for listening, good luck.